Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. And today, once again, we're right here at Hangarete. Uh, right here. Uh, we're right here. Yeah, we're right here, right? <laughs> 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 Amen. <laughs> Kenneth Copeland Bible College. Did you hear what I just said? <laughs> Kenneth Copeland Bible College? You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> Who would have thunk it? <laughs> no, I never would have. No, 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 no. Thank you, Jesus. But thank God before the foundation of the world, God had an idea. Amen. And I'm so glad He did. And uh, Father, we thank you today that we're a covenant people. And we look to you this morning for revelation from heaven. We come before your word with an exciting spirit, which is the spirit of faith. And we thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. We're talking about David, a covenant man, a covenant minded man, a man that had, well, you remember the Bible said he's a man after God's own heart. Now, now why, why would God say that? Because he put that covenant first before his own life. I mean, he fouled up, he messed up, but he was always very quick to repent and cry out to God. Oh, amen. Because he had a covenant with God and he knew it. And he walked in that covenant. He was ever mindful of it and he had no fear of anybody but God because he knew where his life was. And he gave his life to God. Amen. Amen. I can see him. I, I, I got this from Professor Stevens. He was talking about uh, the 23rd Psalm. And, and he asked me this. He said, uh, uh, you know, we know the 23rd Psalm. And I said, yes, yeah, sure. And, and, and I, I said, uh, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He said, no. That's not the way the Jews sing it. A Psalm of David, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. See, God recognized who was singing. Don't, hey, don't uh, criticize David until you get in the book. <laughs> he just happens to be in Hebrews chapter 11. Without faith, you don't get in the book, particularly in chapter 11. Well, don't you think Samson really fouled up? He's in chapter 11 of Hebrews. By faith, Samson. Huh? Amen. Don't criticize Peter until you walk on the water. He didn't walk long, but he was there for a while. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So let, let's look at once again in 1 Samuel. And we're talking here about David coming up against Goliath. Now, the, the, the one of the most, imp I th I, my, my opinion, the most important thing that we saw here yesterday was right here in the 24th verse of uh, 1 Samuel 17. And all, look at that now, all the men of Israel, when they saw Goliath, when they saw, they didn't wait to hear what he had to say. When they saw him, they ran. The sight of him frightened them extremely. Just the sight of him. So, and we realize from what we read yesterday, David being a covenant man, I, I mean, he, he said the lion and the bear had no covenant. This Philistine doesn't either, and I'll kill him. 
Yeah, and and I, I want to point out the fact that David never did use the word try. No, he didn't. That wasn't on his mind. That isn't on the mind of covenant people. If God said, don't do that, he don't come back, well, I'll try not to. I just don't do it. Well, I don't know. Just don't, don't, don't even start there. God has never told you or me or anyone else to do anything or to not do anything and pr not provide the way and the means and the power to get it done. Yes. Amen. 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 That's just him. Yes. That's the way he is. And he never changes. Now, sometime during this week, we'll, we'll deal with some things, some traditional things like, well, now you know, Brother Copeland, we believe that healing has passed away. Really now? Where'd it go? <laughs> On what day? Well, I believe that God, well, it doesn't make a difference what you believe. Well, I have just as much right to believe it. No, you don't. Not if you're a Christian. I don't either. I don't have any right to believe anything except what the Bible says. And I have to change my way of thinking and change my lifestyle according to that. You don't know, change that. <laughs> you don't know, change this. You may not understand it, but that's not God's problem. It's yours. Because understanding is there. Understanding is in the wisdom of God. When you get it, get understanding. Isn't that what, isn't that what, that's what the book says. And all you need to know is living right in here. <laughs> all you need to know, he is living right in here because he wrote the book. Are you with me? Well, sure you are. Now then, that I, I, I really want to, uh, I really must bear down on that. What they saw frightened them. Go back to the wilderness adventure. Was the land exactly like God said? Yes, it was. But they said, 12 went out, 10 came back and preached a lie. Instead of an 11 day walk, you had to spend 40 years at it. But there's giants in the land, and we're grasshoppers. David refused to be a grasshopper. They were not grasshoppers in those giants' eyes. They were grasshoppers in their eyes. Why? size. And have anything to do with anything, how big they are. How big he is. What is the Goliath in your life? A huge debt? Like my dad used to say, that's no hill for a stepper. <laughs> Amen. Not to, as, how big is it? What is it? Who cares? So it is vital to never be moved. Faith people must never be moved by what they see. What you see with your eyes. No, 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 no. No, you don't you never be moved by what you feel. Feelings don't have anything to do with it. Be moved by what you believe. I'm not smart enough to have thought that up. I got that from Brother Hagin. <laughs> Amen. But it, st it stood me good for the last 54 years. Almost 54 years in January. Amen. It, it's 
see, faith people, now, uh, uh, um, it's, it's, it's most important, particularly what we've been through in 2020. Th- this is, you talk about big. <laughs> this is huge. A faith man, a faith woman, we never have to change our lifestyle because of the times. Never, never. Good times, bad times, middle-sized times. <laughs> we never change our lifestyle. Amen. So, because see, you, after having been born again, made a new creature, a new creation, a species of being. All things became new. Second Corinthians 5. All things became new. And all things were gone. Old things passed away. What old thing passed away? That old nature. That old sinful nature. It's gone again. <laughs> Skip to Malou. <laughs> it's gone, brother. It's gone, sister. Woo! Just gone. Gone, 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 gone. And never coming back. A new creation. Now you have to learn to think like a new creation. You have to learn to act like a new creation. You're a new being. That's the reason you have to renew your mind. You have to change your way of thinking, change your way of talking. You know, uh, we have our own vocabulary. (laughs) And I I never bring this up, but I, I get so thrilled with it. A young man here at EMIC, his, his little boy, this was a number of years ago. And um, they went on a road trip and he's just a little guy and they had a potty emergency. And so they stopped at a roadside thing, you know, and they walked in there and he said, Ooh, daddy, it smells like the curse of the law in here. <laughs> If you've ever been in one of those things, you, you know, <laughs> smells like the curse of the law. In it. Well, see, that's the way he was raised. So he sees everything through the eyes of the curse and the blessing. Because that's the way he's raised. What is he? He's growing up, knowing his covenant, knowing the difference between the curse of the law and the blessing of Abraham that's come on us, the Gentiles, through Christ Jesus. That's a shouting place right there. Now then, let's get back to Goliath, all right? So, uh, back to 1 Samuel 17. And we're here, uh, let's, let's back up verse 40. No, let's rehearse verse 36 again. And the servant, your servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be as one of them. They didn't have any covenant, and neither does he, and I'm going to kill him. David, he never mentioned anything about, I'm going to try to kill him, I'm going to see if I can. No, he said, I'm going to kill him. He told told Saul, quit, hey, don't worry about it. Just, just forget it. I'm, I'm going to kill him. So the Philistines said to David, am I a dog that you come to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Famous last words. <laughs> I will Give your flesh to the fowl of the air and to the beasts of the field. 
And David said to the Philistine, <laughs> you come to me with a shield. I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. I come at you in the name of the Lord Shabboth, the Lord of the heavenly angelic armies of God. The giant cursed David and his gods. <laughs> it was over right then. Over right then. Listen to this. Verse 46. Faith. Today, why did they get so angry with Jesus in Luke four eighteen? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to preach. He has anointed me to heal. He has anointed me. He closed the book and began to say, this day, this day is this 61st chapter of Isaiah accomplished in your ears. Today? Yes. Who do you think you are today? If he'd have said, ah, oh, there's coming a one. Yes, like Moses of old. There's come, oh, 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 there's come one. Oh, bless the name of the Lord God. And he will be like Moses and he'll live 120 years. And he said, yeah, 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 yeah. Preach it, brother, preach it, brother, preach it. <laughs> but he said today. Wow. <laughs> what today we know your mama we know your daddy no they didn't they didn't know he did that was a problem today oh that makes people mad at faith people today is the day today is the day of my victory don't see how you can stand there and say that. Today you are healed. Look at your nosy running thing. <laughs> what you mean telling me that? <laughs> you want to hear it again? Oh. Today. Amen. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. Look at all that on your arm. What? Yeah, man, look at your running out your nose. What that is today. I'm healed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -uh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, wait a minute. You can't put people down for that that don't know. That's our job to straighten that out. This rash on my arm is not the truth. Now, naturally, it's true that it's there, but that's not the truth. That's just a fact. The truth is, by his stripes I was healed. If I was healed, I am healed now. And I keep applying the truth, and it will remove the fact. That kind of clears up the yeah. good. muddy water, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. Because, you know, there, there are people that, that say, that, and, and, you know, you can't blame people that don't know any better. That's our job. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's, our job is to make that clear. And it's only clear when seen through the eyes of faith. 
So what do you do? You just keep teaching it and you just keep preaching it and you just keep preaching it and you just keep teaching it. Well, how long is it going to take them to get? I don't know how long to take you. <laughs> well, it didn't take me but a few minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you're going to be learning for the rest of your life. Amen. I mean, I've been doing as well, be 54 years in January. Yeah. And I'm learning more now than I ever have in my life. I've never seen so much before. I mean, just, I, I just got something yesterday. Uh, we did it last night on Flashpoint, if any of you saw it. I, I mean, what was it that God told Elisha? I still have 7,000. I still have 7,000. Think about it. Only 7,000 people in all of Israel. So what is he supposed to do? He's going to make Israel great again. If we get down to 7,000 people in this nation, if we get down to 7,000 people that are against abortion, we'll still win. Hallelujah. Why? Because God started this nation and only God can finish it. Hallelujah. He's the only one that can finish it. No human being can wipe this out. He can give us a lot of trouble, but no human being can wipe it out. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Yes, sir. Aren't you glad you're here? Yes, sir. I am too. Thank you, Jesus. It, it's, it's, you and I are blessed beyond measure to have been allowed to live on this side of this. We're in that place that those long ago, so long to be, to get to see this, to get to see what we've seen and know what we know. And we're out of time and Goliath isn't dead yet. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.